my favorite parts of summer are the movie trailers. That intense music gets me every time, and I can feel my heart racing as those drums are building. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And I'm thinking, I wonder what movie this is. And of course, it has a protagonist character that's enduring a conflict with insurmountable odds stacked against them, all for the greater good of humanity. It's never anything as tried as opening a jar of pickles. But there I am on the edge of my seat, my eyes are widening as these images and scenes are flashing before me, and I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if this will be in a theater near me. And of course, there's that cliche sound bite like, I'll be back. And then the inevitable moment that this is all building up to, when I scream to my wife and I say, we've got to see this on the big screen, and she's less than enthused and mutters under her breath, we'll run it on demand. But that could take months, and this preview has me on pins and needles. I can't wait. And I imagine that's how the prophet Daniel felt in Daniel chapter 12, when he received a vision. And a vision is a divinely sent preview of what's yet to come. And so cue those drums. Du -du 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 -du. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. And there will be a time of distress, such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. In this cliffhanging preview, Daniel witnesses those who have fallen asleep in the dust, those who have completely decomposed, who have returned from which they came from dust to dust, a reminder of how fragile we are. And all logic would have us believe that there is no bringing these people back. But God isn't bound by the laws of nature. In a cinematic twist, those who have passed on or fallen asleep as the Apostle Paul describes them are suddenly awoken to everlasting life. They were dust and now they have brand new bodies. Talk about enduring conflict with insurmountable odds stacked against them. And believe it or not, these events are coming soon to a world near you. And this preview that Daniel was audience to was not the first of its kind. And the prophet Ezekiel saw a vision of a great valley of dry bones, a resting place for those who had died. And then the Spirit of God breathes through the valley, and the bones become covered with flesh and tendons, blood pulsing through these veins once more, and God's created children are restored to life. Now, it must be said that when Daniel and Ezekiel received these visions, the release date for these events were far off. And the people of God would have to wait over 500 years for the curtain to be raised and for the scene to unfold. And it's in the Gospels that we find a hero who they refer to as the life. And they call him this because he is the key to the abundant life that we were made for. Whereas the first Adam in Genesis 1 brings death into this world, this new Adam, Jesus, brings us life everlasting with God. But in order to do this, he has to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and enter into the pit of despair, Sheol, and overcome the gates of Hades and carry our cross of guilt and sin up Golgotha, the place of the skull. And it's in this space with the stench of decomposition that he breathes his last. It is finished. But don't roll the credits yet. In fact, start building up those drums because God does the unexpected. And I say unexpected because even though Ezekiel and Daniel told us that there was more to come, somehow Jesus' followers must have forgotten those prophecies and missed those trailers and they thought the story was over. 
And a couple summers ago, I remember watching the first Infinity War movie, which actually ends with, spoiler alert, half the universe dying and the bad guy winning. It is not happily ever after. And there was this boy near us with his mom, and he looked shell-shocked, like he was about to cry. And understandably so, tons of his favorite heroes had died and the bad guy had won. But having grown up as a comic book nerd, I knew that there was still more yet to come. I knew the truth, that it was darkest before the dawn. I knew that there was a part two, and so I turned to him and I said, just so you know, there's more to come. This isn't over with. Spoiler alert, the good guys are going to beat the bad guys, and the dead will come back to the land of the living. Much like our hero in the Gospels, who might as well have just said, I'll be back. Apparently, Jesus' disciples missed that soundbite. And there's a story in the Gospel of Luke in which two of Jesus' closest friends were on the road to the ever-elusive village, Emmaus. And the events of Jesus' untimely death would have left them in quite a haze. I still remember feeling listless and in a mental fog when I lost a dear friend years ago. Just trying to wrap my head around it. I can imagine they felt something similar. In Luke 24, 14, it says they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And imagine how heavy they must have felt as they lumbered towards Emmaus. And why are they going to Emmaus? What are they looking for in this town that coincidentally has never been found? Some scholars speculate its very existence, like Atlantis or Shangri-La. Maybe the looking for Emmaus is representative of looking for somewhere to get away from loss and death, which seems impossible to find in our world, until they run into the very person who promised a world without either of those things, a world without loss and death, the very person they never thought they'd see again. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. Ironically, this happened a lot when Jesus appears after his resurrection. Mary didn't recognize him. Thomas doubted him. Some of his closest friends walked right past him. And finally, at some point in this story, Jesus loses his cool and says, How foolish you are and slow to believe all that the prophets had spoken. And there was a lot. Didn't you get Daniel's memo or Ezekiel or Isaiah or Hosea? And when it does finally dawn on them, when they, it does finally hit them and they recognize Jesus, they realize the implications. If those prophecies are true, if that vision that Hosea saw of death being swallowed up in victory is the new reality, then the sky is the limit. Nothing can hold them back. In Christ, there is only victory, which is bad news for the bad guys. And there's this wonderful scene in Oscar Wilde's play, Salome in which Herod receives the inconvenient news of Jesus' resurrection. And in his frustration, he says, I do not wish for him to do that. I forbid for him to do that. I allow no man to be raised from the dead. Go and find him and tell him I forbid him from being raised from the dead. And there we have the blustering words of a tyrant who is losing control of the situation. And little does this bad guy know that it is only the beginning. So cue the intense music because this whole death thing was an opportunity for the greatest show on earth. For the epic scene in which Jesus would put sin to death. Which is precisely what happens when we die. Sin no longer has any hold on us. We are completely dead to our transgressions. Pain and suffering are a thing of the past. And it doesn't end there. A day awaits us when we will rise up in glory with Jesus. The multitudes will awaken and breathe everlasting life. And we will shine like the stars in the summer sky. It happened to Jesus and it will happen to us. 
His resurrection was the trailer to the movie that we are all waiting for. Resurrection, coming to a body near you. In a way, it already has. And sometimes we just need someone to stop us in our tracks or put a hand on our shoulder and tell us that good news, that that same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. And for the early Christians, this wasn't just pie in the sky, living like daydreamers with their heads in the clouds, wishful thinking, no. The hope of the future resurrection also gave them hope that that same power that raised Christ from the dead would be raising them into a new life every single day. That every day was a chance to be awoken by God and to shine like those stars in the heavens. And I love what C.S. Lewis says in Mere Christianity. He says, we Christians are in the business of being made new and trying to be new, but in a less worried way. Not doing things in order to be saved, but because he has begun to save us already. Not hoping to get into heaven as a reward for our actions, but wanting to act in a certain way because a first faint gleam of heaven is already inside us. We are a people who have eternal life welling up inside us. Like new wine and old wineskins, we wait for our brand new bodies to fully form. A first faint gleam of heaven is already inside you and me. Let's not live like the foolish who are slow to believe all that the prophets had spoken. And during this hour, Let's not find ourselves trying to run away looking for that road to Emmaus. Let's remember that we've found everything we need in Jesus. In the news of Jesus' resurrection, it is a way of queuing up those drums and knowing that the prophecies of Daniel and Ezekiel and Hosea have already begun. To quote Paul, this is our time to shine like the stars in the skies. Can you hear it? Even though COVID-19 continues to take lives and isolate humanity, can you hear it? Even though we're still living in exile, can you hear it? Can you hear those drums? Can you sense that God has more scenes in store for us? That this faint gleam of heaven, this eternal power that's welling up inside us, assures us of future glory. And yes, there are days when it feels like the bad guy, the enemy has won. But spoiler alert, the hero already had victory. We know how this story ends. We're just waiting for the end of this movie when those credits will roll and all those names in the book of life will be under the resurrected. When the dead will come back to the land of the living. When those who we love who have fallen asleep will rise from the dust of the earth and we will all shine like the stars in the heavens coming soon to a world near you. Da, 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 da.